I have been waiting for ubiquitous UX3 Pro for almost two years. This so-called next generation gateway is exactly what I expect from Ubiquiti to replace the USG Pro, which was released five years ago, I believe. But almost two years passed, I was even afraid that Ubiquiti will cancel this product, just like in the past, they canceled some very promising products. But finally, several days ago, they released it. And right after it's available for ordering, I purchased one. And today I just receive it. The accessories are almost the same as other Ubiquiti switches. The only exception is the SFP Plus cable. It's white color, 10 gigabits. It's a bonus, I'm surprised, but it's just too short. This is how it looks like after being mounted on the rack. The top one is the UXG Pro, the hero of this video. The middle one is the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. And the bottom one is the USG Pro, the old one. So the new one, the UXG Pro, the target customer, I believe, is the same as the USG Pro. People don't want to have the built-in unified controller in their router, and they want to use external controller to manage the router firewall, just like other switches. In most use cases for the UXG, you need a cloud key. The UXG Pro is not based on the same hardware as USG Pro. Especially for USG Pro, it inherited many software or management features from the Edge router. For example, the many people's favorite JSON configuration file feature is not available in UXG Pro because the UXG Pro is based on the new OS from Ubiquiti. It simply doesn't have the old Edge router features. Now on the screen in the middle, you see the UXG Pro. The top one is the UDM Pro. Many people own the UDM Pro already. The UXG Pro share the same platform as UDM Pro, and they have the same CPU. UXG Pro has half of the memory as UDM Pro, and UXG Pro doesn't have the controller's software, and the UXG Pro doesn't have the surveillance functionality. As you can see, it doesn't have the hard drive tray, and the UXG Pro doesn't have the 8-part switch, as you can see in the UDM Pro. Basically, UXG Pro is a UDM Pro with lesser hardware. You know what? Ubiquiti charge more for UXG Pro. Yeah, this is not fair. Maybe that's something people have to pay if they want to use the so-called enterprise features, maybe. This is the back of the rack. In the middle, you see the UDM Pro, and the bottom one is UXG Pro. As you can see, the UXG Pro and the UDM Pro, they both support the ubiquitous RPS redundant power system, but you need to first have a RPS unit, and then you need to purchase a additional proprietary RPS cable. Of course, the device comes with the standard power cable, the right side one. You don't need to worry about that. There's difference between UDM Pro and the UXG Pro in the back. See the red circle area? For UXG Pro, it has an additional outlet. It's not mentioned in the installation instruction, but I guess it's for the internet modem, just like the separate plug, Ubiquiti cells, but it's just now it's integrated to the UXG Pro. It's just my guess. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments area. On the front panel, there are only four ports. One, two, three, four. One and three have the internet indicator. I want to plug all four cables to take full advantage of the device, right? But according to Ubiquiti's installation guide, if you want 10 gigabits connection, 
you use the right side as FP plus ports. If you only want one gigabit, you need the left side one and two, the RJ45 Ethernet ports. I tried to plug in all four of them. Let me show you the results. As you can see, the UXG Pro and the connected other switches, they were adopted successfully and they all have IP address dot one dot something as expected, no surprise at all. But if I go to the UXG Pro, try to show the four ports, that's the surprise because only the right side the two SSP plus ports, the 10 gigabits ports, are showing active. The left two, they are showing the black color because they are disabled. Even though I plugged all four of them, the system automatically chose the two high speed one and then disabled the other two. So which means I cannot have to LAN to one. You may know already UXG Pro and UDM Pro, they support dual one failover. They don't support one load balance, at least yet, but they do support one failover. But here, as you can see, the lab two, they are disabled. How you can support two ones, two lines, right? Let's see how we can open them up. Let me show you the parts. And as you can see, the part one and the part two, they are disabled. And then if you click the configure interface, yeah, you have a chance to change the interface in this dialog, but now you have nothing to choose from. Then the next step is we need to add LAN2 and WAN2. Go to controller, go to settings, and under networks, you can see the LAN configuration. There's only one LAN which was created by default and it's showing the dot one subnet for internet there's only a single one created it's showing the correct my home lab ip address i assigned this is not a real internet ip address it's my private network i'm using it in my home lab for now and what we need to do is create one two and the lan two here i don't want to do it in the so-called new user interface i know ubiquity has been pushing the new ui and even in the latest upgrades they renamed the classic ui to legacy ui but for this purpose to create new networks i still want to use the old ui here i'm in the old interface let me create a new lan first create new network here let me say lan2 and of course it's corporate network because we want to use a separate network part it's not just a vlan only network and here see that's why i want to switch to the old ui because i have a chance to select network group basically it means which physical network part or interface interestingly you can see three lan here i will talk about the lan three later but for this LAN2 purpose, let's choose the LAN2, which means the other one gigabit part, right? Here, let me change the IP address. Okay. Yep, I don't want to change anything else and simply click save. So the LAN2 is created. Now let me create a one two. Here are the network group. Let me choose purpose to one. And now the network group changed. You only have one and one, two. Let me switch to one, two. Nothing else I want to change. Save. That's it. So we easily create LAN2 and one, two, right? Then let me switch back to the new interface. Then let's see how we can use the newly created two networks. Now let's try to use the two networks we just created. Go to UXG Pro, under settings, go to parts, configure interfaces. For part one, we wanted to use the one two interface. And for the part two, I want to use the LAN two. 
Okay, apply. It's getting provisioned. Then I will try to restart several switches because I do have switches connected to port 2. Let's see whether it will get new IP address. Our LAN 2 interface has different IP address range which is in another subnet. To adopt switch in that subnet, you need level 3 adoption. So I'm going to the network setting. I'm trying to find DHCP option 43 setting. Okay, it's here, 43. Asking for the network controller's IP address. This is my network controller's IP address. Before applying changes, you know what? I just notice this combo box. It seems without switching to the old user interface, you can still switch the network group. Okay, anyway, I'm more used to the old UI. You may try this one, maybe it will also work. Let me apply changes. Okay, now let's see whether our new switch appears in the new subnet. After restarting the switch, as you can see, this new switch is adopted successfully and the IP address is showing subnet 2, which is exactly what we configured for the LAN 2 interface. Perfect. That's what we expect. So far, so good. So we make the LAN 1 and the LAN 2 work already, right? So let's go to the USG Pro. Let's check the IP address from the four ports colors. They are showing the correct color. And if I go to ports, configure, they are all active. Interesting. Okay, so apparently in future videos, I need more testings about the one and the one two, the two one interfaces to see whether it's just working in a fail over way or I can even configure load balance. The last thing I want to show you is, remember when we configure LAN 2 interface, we see the LAN 3 option, right? UXG Pro, it has four ports you can use 2S1, 2S LAN, right? But in fact, it doesn't have to work that way because you can ignore whatever indicated on the panel. You can use it as whatever purpose you want. Let's go to settings, go to internet. Let me remove the one two first. Remember we just created, right? Let me remove it. Okay, now we only have one one interface. This time let me go to LAN and create a LAN three. Yeah, I'm okay with the dot three subnet. Switch to menu. Here I want to see LAN three. Let me save it. Then go to device. Go to UXG Pro Parts. Okay, the first one is showing deactivated because remember we deleted one, two, right? That's what's assigned here. Let's assign the new LAN 3 to it. Configure. Here, let me say LAN 3. Apply. Wait till it's refreshed. Okay, it's refreshed. This one is our LAN 3. So basically you can have three different physical LAN ports, just one internet port if you want. That's very flexible. This is the network diagram we used for this video. In fact, in this video we just started. I'm going to have multiple videos in the future to explore all the features I'm interested in in UXG Pro. Let me briefly talk about the network topology. This first area is my home network. My main router is PFSense and I use Unify switches. But for this video and the future related videos, I'm constructing the environment in my lab network. In the video, you already see the two one interfaces and the two LAN interfaces. For the two one interfaces, they get different IP address because I configure a different VLAN in my home network. And for the two LAN interfaces, I connect them into two different unified switches and they will have different subnet they are not 
using different VLAN, there are two different physical networks. For each part, I connected with different Linux virtual machines or Mac through the Wi-Fi. This is the main testing environment going forward for this UXG Pro. But from time to time, I'm going to bypass my home network, directly connect internet to this one part, or connect the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus to this private network, this LAN network, just to really use it in a production-like environment and to explore more options. And here, of course, I use different colors to indicate the different speed because one important reason people upgrade to UXG Pro from the old USG Pro is for the network performance, right? We will test it out. Okay, thanks for watching.